welcome to sections 2.25 and 2.26, where we're going to kind of introduce the basics of cellular respiration and talk about the differences between the two main pathways for cellular respiration, which we called aerobic and anaerobic. So before we get started, I just want to remind you guys that when we talk about cellular respiration, this is just the process where we take organic compounds, of which glucose is kind of our poster child, uh, and we're going to break those organic compounds into smaller pieces, usually CO2, and in the process, the energy released will be used to rebuild ATP from its pieces, which is ADP and regular inorganic phosphate. So we're essentially just going to make ADP, which has two phosphates, and add a phosphate to make ATP, which will have three phosphates. So this is what we'll do while we break this down to essentially carbon dioxide. So that's the big, 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 big picture. Now, as I kind of continue with this, I want to make sure you're comfortable with some of the ideas that we've been tying together. So we just finished discussing photosynthesis, which was taking carbon dioxide and water and converting that into organic compounds. Once again, glucose was kind of our poster child, and oxygen. And so this was done by photosynthetic autotrophs. So only a small subgroup of organisms do this. What we're going to talk about now is the opposite of this, where we're going to take organic compounds and oxygen. So this is glucose, our poster child, and oxygen. And I'll write glucose here just to make sure you remember it. That's all it is. Uh, but this could just as easily be something else, anything, any organic compound, uh, or I should say any of them could be. But for most organisms, there's a variety of organic compounds that they can break down. And they'll do so by mixing with oxygen. We see that here. And then as a product, they're going to be able to make ATP. And then they'll have water and CO2 formed. The water is useful in our bodies. Uh, so metabolic water, they call that. That can just become part of our total water. The CO2 is the waste which we exhale. And you can see this is a cycle. So as we exhale the carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide and water can be used for photosynthesis, or in some cases, chemosynthesis too, uh, to convert it back to organic compounds and oxygen which can then go back through. So you should start to get the feel that there's another one of these cycles here. Because one direction, in this case, glucose and oxygen gives us carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. This direction is going to be considered cellular respiration. So I'll write CR. But if you do the opposite, if we reverse this process, that is essentially photosynthesis. So I'll try to squeeze that in. So when we're looking at this whole process here, this will be another complete cycle where plants are, generally speaking, producing excess of organic compounds and oxygen. We then ingest those, and then we use them to break it down, and then we form carbon dioxide and water, which then the plants can use to go through and do photosynthesis. So there's a cycle where we both use each other. Now, I will caution you, everybody does cell respiration. You'll notice this arrow up top, because this is not something that just animals and fungus and heterotrophs do. This is something even autotrophs do. The difference here is you'll notice they're doing a lot more photosynthesis. It's a really big arrow, whereas for cell respiration, they're not doing near as much. So overall, they do way more photosynthesis than cellular respiration. That's why even though they do use some oxygen for cellular respiration as a plant, because they do so much more photosynthesis, you can think of it where they're making like 10 oxygens and using two. The other eight are waste. So that's why we oftentimes kind of ignore the fact that they do a little bit of cell respiration, and we just talk about the fact that plants release oxygen. They do that because they're doing more photosynthesis than cell respiration. So it's just kind of a ratio. Uh, now the next thing I want to discuss is just what aerobic and anaerobic are. So when we talk about anaerobic, it's going to be all about no oxygen. An means not. Aerobic is going to refer to having oxygen. So no oxygens, anaerobic. Having oxygen around is going to make it aerobic. So between these two, I want to make sure you guys understand a little bit about what the differences are, but also about why one of them may be used more frequently than the other. So to start things off, all organisms that are going to break down glucose, regardless of whether or not oxygen is present, will do glycolysis. And this will net them two ATP. You know, awesome. We've got two. Now, if there's oxygen present, you'll then continue on doing aerobic respiration, which will involve the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. And that will ultimately get you somewhere around 34 to 36 ATP total just from that. So these steps, Krebs and electron transport chain, 
produce an additional 34 to 36 ATP, a lot. If you don't have oxygen present, you're going to go and do anaerobic respiration, which involves fermentation is the only other step. And then fermentation will break down and produce these other molecules, lactic acid or ethanol. Uh, but in the process of fermentation, notice there's no ATP produce, none, no additional. So if you're looking at anaerobic respiration, this whole without, oxy without oxygen idea, you're going to produce a total, a, t or two, a total of two ATP. If you're doing aerobic, you're going to produce somewhere in the neighborhood of 36 to 38 ATP. So there's a huge difference between the two. It's kind of like if you're going to go sell something and you're able to either get $2 for it or for the exact same item, a glucose in this case, you can get 36 to $38. So I want to make sure in your mind you realize that these two are not equivalent processes. They have different steps after glycolysis, and they produce vastly different amounts of usable energy for a cell. So there's a reason why we'll focus more on aerobic respiration and talk about that most organisms will prefer to do aerobic respiration if they can. Just like you guys would prefer to get you know, $38 for something you're selling instead of two. So anaerobic, you can see the steps here, glycolysis and fermentation. And so with aerobic, we'll have glycolysis followed by the Krebs cycle, followed by the electron transport system, or you might see it called the electron transport chain. It's also oftentimes abbreviated as the ETS or the ETC. Uh, which one it is depends upon who you're talking to or which book. I don't care which one you use. If you like ETC, go for it. If you like ETS, go for it. Uh, you'll see me use both usually because sometimes I kind of weave in and out. So just be aware those will be essentially equivalent for what we're going to be doing here in class. And so this process, once again, is going to produce way more ATP. You're going to get this first step here, glycose, glyco, geez, oh, Pete's. glucose to pruvate will be glycolysis. And that one's going to produce our whopping 2 ATP we talked about. That's the ones that you get even if it's anaerobic. And then down here, just remember, this one will produce up to 36 ATP from doing the Krebs cycle and the electron transport system. So it's important that we're able to do these things, but you can only do these ones if there's oxygen. Now, beyond there, I want to make sure you're comfortable with location. So I want to do just a little bit of an intro uh, to reacquaint you with the mitochondria and reacquaint you with the parts of where things are going to occur. So starting off, Glycolysis, the most universal, the oldest of these processes, uh, glycolysis by being the first step, by being the only one you have to do because it does give you some energy, this one will be the one that has, seems to have evolved first. We see this almost universally in organisms. So this is one of those common metabolic pathways that seems to go way back in time, just like using DNA and using ATP, where it seems like pretty much all organisms use the same thing. So this is one of the oldest. Uh, and this one's fairly universal. You know, it doesn't matter if there's oxygen or not. We're going to do this. That occurs in the cytoplasm, which makes sense. It doesn't need a fancy organelle. It's going to occur in the cytoplasm. So even simple cells, because all cells have cytoplasm, can do this. Anaerobic respiration, which also appears to be a much older process, uh, because quite frankly, there wasn't even oxygen in the air till probably somewhere around 2.5 billion years ago, we'll say, just to keep it general. Uh, prior to that, so from about 4 billion years, 4.0, to about 2.5 billion years ago, there wasn't oxygen in the air. So there was essentially no O2 to begin with. So we likely would have had to have everybody doing this. And so fermentation, the anaerobic way, what they'd have to do, will also take place in the cytoplasm. So that all makes sense. Now, as we evolved aerobic respiration, as time went on and we got more and more oxygen in the atmosphere, because initially, if you really want some fun history, uh, you had where photosynthesis likely started about 3.5 billion years ago, but a lot of the initial oxygen made rust. So it bonded with iron that was around to make rust, and we can actually see these rust rings or layers that there are in the soil from rocks way back then. And probably somewhere around 2.7, 2.5 billion years ago, it kind of just ran out of iron that was sitting around that was easily able to bind with oxygen. So that's when we started to get oxygen in the atmosphere. Now, it wasn't a ton at the time, but it started to be out there. And so that allowed for us to have the aerobic pathway and do the Krebs cycle and the electron transport system instead of just doing fermentation, you know, as an alternate. It's much more efficient. So once it was there, this was the better pathway for an organism that was trying to survive. Because if I can produce 38 ATP for every two you make, 
I'm likely going to outcompete you so long as oxygen is present. And so this process occurs in the mitochondria. So this one will use an organelle. And if you look at the mitochondria, you'll see, and I have a picture on the next slide, but I'll draw a terrible one. You're going to see it's got two membranes, and the inner membrane's all squiggly. This is the mitochondrial cristae. So this is where the electron transport system is embedded. And the matrix is just the innermost part. It's like the cytosol that's inside the cristae, inside the inner membrane. And that's where the Krebs cycle will occur. So you should make sure you're just comfortable with where things happen. And then this last bit is just a kind of a picture of the mitochondria over here. And I kind of wanted to get across to you guys that while we won't memorize all of these steps, just that this stuff is way more complicated than what we're going to cover it at. I'm trying to give you a conceptual overview. We're not going to memorize all the different stages, all the different molecules, because there's a lot of them. So right here you'll see in the cytoplasm we've got glycolysis occurring, and it's ultimately going to produce a molecule for us, which we'll talk about later, pruvate. And then we're going to go into the matrix, the innermost part for the Krebs cycle. And then after the Krebs cycle, we're going to move to the cristae, which will be this inner folded membrane you see here. And you can see it's blown up to show that the electron transport system or chain is embedded in this inner membrane. So kind of as I draw red here, this is all going to be where we're embedding the electron transport chains or systems. And you can see it's useful that it's a nice folded membrane because it gives us more surface area, more membrane. And the more membrane we have, the more electron transport systems or chains that we can stick into it which means the faster we can do cell respiration, which is important if you need a lot of ATP. That's it for now. We'll pick up with this later. Hope you enjoyed it. Take it easy.